welcome back. I hope you've been having some fun with your Volca sample, and I hope you've started writing some basic little uh, songs in there and saving them in the different memory slots. Um, so everything we've learned so far is the live record mode, uh, where effectively all the machine is doing is recording the timing of when you press each of the buttons to trigger the sounds. So with the Volca samples live record mode, it's a bit like playing a traditional instrument like a piano or a guitar or something. Obviously the sounds are a bit different, but you have to bring your own rhythm to it, right? You have to press the, the button at the right time uh, in order for the song to sound good. So uh, what we're gonna learn today is a different approach to doing that, an approach where you don't necessarily have to have the rhythm uh, you know, perfectly down in your fingers. You can uh, tell the, the computer or the device to kind of make the rhythm for you. So what we're doing today is called sequencing as a general term, and uh, a sequencer is a device that allows you to make a sequence. Um, other people also call this a uh, pattern. Uh, a sequence and a pattern are two terms that are used interchangeably. They mean, they mean the same thing. And each little part of a sequence we call a step. Uh, so specifically what we're doing today is we're learning how to use the step sequencer on the Volca sample. So let's check it out. Before we even get to the Volca sample, I just want to show you on a traditional piano keyboard because I think it's maybe a little easier to understand that way. And if you don't know how to play piano, don't worry about it, it doesn't matter. So to explain what a sequence is, we're going to look at a very, very simple song, uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And a sequence is a series of notes or sounds that are played in a particular order. So you see I have the numbers 1 through 16 written here, and above each I have a bucket. Uh, so the idea is, imagine that the song is a series of buckets, and in each one of those buckets, you can put a certain amount of sound. Uh, that could be a combination of different sounds, of like drums, guitar, voices, whatever. Uh, it could be a single sound, or it could also be silence. It could be nothing at all. So in music, any time there's a period of silence, we call that a rest. So uh, let's look at the, my daughter's favorite song, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. It goes like this. not the whole song, but that's just the first little part of it, right? So that happens to be 16 steps long. So I'll show you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rest, which counts as eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, rest. So in this case, uh, numbers eight and 16 are rests, and the rest of them each have a note in them. Don't worry about what the notes are at this point, it's not important. So if we wanted to, uh, if we wanted to write out this song, uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, or at least the first little part of it, we need 16 steps in order to do that. So on the Volca sample, the steps correspond to these gray pads down here when we're in a particular mode called step mode. So in the case of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, each of our buckets has either a single note or it has nothing, it has silence, or we call that a rest, right? So in all of the buckets, we have a single note except for buckets eight and 16, those each have a rest in them. So I'll play it one more time through. Okay. So now let's take a look at the Volca sample. So on the Volca sample, uh, we have these 16 touch pads at the bottom. And you know, normally in what we did before in live record mode, those just play back different sounds, right? Or the first 10 do at least. Um, but the Volca sample also has this other mode called uh, step mode or step sequencer mode. You access it by pressing this button right here, the one that says step mode above it. Now it says step on the screen and we're in step mode. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load one of the default songs that comes on it. Uh, 
memory slot six here. This is what it sounds like normally. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn the tempo way down to 80, which is nice and slow. Okay, so we'll use this to kind of reverse engineer what they did in this song. So first I'm gonna turn on step mode by pressing this button. You see that stays lit and it now says step. That means we're in step sequencer mode. And so you can see now, if I press these buttons down here, they don't make sound anymore. Instead, they turn these lights on and off, right? Well, what's that mean? So what this is telling us is that for part one, the one that's selected down here, um, this part is firing on these four steps. So that means in our buckets here, right, this particular part is firing on step one, right there. It's firing on step five, right there. On step nine, right there. And on step 13, right there, okay? So uh, this sound, if we turn this back off, we can play the sound is this drum type of sound, right? So uh, this pattern happens to be what we call four on the floor. Uh, this is a, a drum pattern that's extremely common to pretty much all dance music. So um, for now, I'm gonna use this mute function to turn off everything else. So we're only gonna hear this one part and nothing else. So let's hear that. See, all these other ones are blinking, but we're not hearing them because it's they're muted. So if we go back into step mode, you can see that as this little LED tracks along the bottom, anytime it passes a pad that's lit up, it makes that sound. So what happens if we add some more? See? That's how we can kind of quickly make little beats and things like this. So all you're doing is you're telling it fire at these particular times as you go around, okay? So I'll go back to our standard four on the floor there. Okay, so if you start thinking about your songs like this, uh, you can actually write your whole song on a piece of paper like this and then just kind of program it into the device um, or just do it all on the device is fine too. So with this particular device, the Volca Sample, we do have a limit of 16 steps. You can't go any longer than that. Uh, once I hit 16, it's going to loop back around to step one. On other devices, you can go longer than 16 steps. So that's just specific to this particular device. But they chose that for a reason. Um, because of this four on the floor drum pattern is so common, 16 step sequences are extremely common in dance music and a lot of popular music. So 16 steps, it's a little bit limiting, but you can really do a lot of kind of popular dancey type music with this uh, pattern. So I recommend, you know, starting with that. So um, now let's start looking at some of the other sounds that we ha have in here. Okay, so I'm gonna unmute everything. So we have all our sounds again. Again, here's our song. Okay, so I can turn on step mode while it's playing. All right, we've already looked at the drum pattern here. Now, how do I switch to another sound, right? If I, if I touch two, it's just turning on and off that step. So that's where these buttons up here come up, come into play. So it says part with little arrows. Think of these just like arrow keys. I'll stop that. Think of these just like arrow keys on your uh, computer keyboard, right? They just go side to side. So I'm in part one right now. I hit this, it switches me to part two, part three, part four, etc. All right, so let's look at part two. And let's go in and mute all these. Okay, so now we're hearing just the original one, which was our four on the floor drum pattern. And then part two, which is this, uh, that snare sound, okay? That is firing on the five and on the 13. So in our pattern here, let's do this one in green. Well, there it is, green, blue to black. Okay, so the snare sound is coming here and here, right? So see how I'm kind of stacking these up? In each bucket, you can have multiple sounds. So in bucket one, we have only this drum sound. In bucket five, we have a drum sound and a snare sound. Nine, it's only drum, and 13, it's drum and snare, right? And you can stack them up. 
since the Volca sample gives you 10 total sound slots to play with, uh, or 10 total samples, each bucket in your song can have up to 10 different sounds happening simultaneously, all right? Uh, which is quite a lot, really. You can do a lot with 10 different sounds per step. Um, you can also have some steps that are completely empty, right, where there's no sound at all, it's silent, and in the musical language we'd call that a rest. So there's that. Let's look at our next part. Okay, so I'm going to have to unmute it so we can hear it. There we go. So this one's a bit more complicated, right? we got something happening on 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 12, 14. So it's kind of a weird off pattern there, right? So let's see what that sounds like. So in this song, they're doing another fancy thing with the speed knob here to change that pitch up and down. We'll explore that later. But for now, just notice that it's the sound is happening here. I'll turn off the others, right? So this sound is happening every time it it's lit. Okay, uh, let's look at the next part. And I'll unmute it. So this part's completely empty, right? So this uh, this sound, which is that deep bass drum. Uh, if you look at the step sequencer mode, there's no steps. So when we play it, nothing happens. All right, so let's go ahead and add some. Okay, uh, let's try that, and then we'll turn some of these back on. Okay, cool. So you see how you can you can kind of think about the little parts of your song, I don't know, a little more cerebrally, cere uh, that's not the right word, <laughs> cerebrally. <laughs> um, so you can kind of think about the parts of your song a little bit more in your head this way, or in a little more of a visual way, I guess, because it's just showing you, this is now representing t a distance of time, right? And it's showing, well, first this is gonna happen, then nothing for a bit, then this will happen, then nothing for a bit, then these, right? So it's just a different way of thinking about your song. Let's find another one of the empty ones. There we go. So part eight is totally empty. All right, we'll unmute it. So this is a fun little uh, trick too to kind of jazz up your song a little bit. So let's play what we have. Well, here, first let's hear step eight by itself. Okay, so it's this wood block sound, which I quite like. Uh, let's turn our step mode back on, hit play. So our song's chugging along, and watch this. So first, uh, when you turn on every single step, uh, you know, it's going to fire every single time, which for kind of a high pitched sound like a woodblock or a hi-hat often sounds really good, right? Um, but you can also then kind of make it a little bit funky by dropping certain steps like I did in the second part. So we'll try this again. And I recommend kind of a trial and error approach like this. I think some people are able to just visualize this in their head and say, oh, I want it on and off in these different steps. For me though, I do it really honestly, just kind of trial and error. I'll turn on every single one and then I'll just kind of randomly turn a couple off and just listen to what it sounds like. And then if I want to add some back in or do whatever, I'll change it. There we go, it's got a cool little funk to it. Okay, let's unmute another. Uh, well, here, let's go see what else we have. So here's another blank one, number 10. Let's see what it sounds like. Oh, it's muted. Okay, so it's like a snap kind of sound. Let's do the same little trick with that one. Step mode, play. So maybe that's a little much when it's firing every single time. So maybe we'll just try just at the end here, see how that sounds. There we go. Cool, so there we go. 
Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically it. That's step sequencing. I think it's a ton of fun. Um, and it's, it's kind of one of my favorite ways to do things. Um, I'll show you this too, another good way of kind of getting started with the song. So let's switch to, um, oh here, I'll save this one, why not? Oops, I loaded. <laughs> okay, so I just accidentally erased what I did. Um, so be careful not to do that, but no worries. I'm gonna um, just erase this sequence, all right? So we learned how to do that before, function, and then the 16th button here, all, that clears all. So now we've got an empty sequence, but I've got all those same sounds. Um, so let's say, you know, I'm looking at kind of a blank slate here and maybe I've got writer's block or something. I can't think of what it is that I want to, uh, what I want to record. So I'll just give myself something to kind of get me going, right? So I'll start with, I want that more bass sound. Yeah, this bass drum I liked. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to step mode and I'm just going to do that same four on the floor pattern, right? So we've got one, five, nine, thirteen, and that's it. So let's just listen to that by itself, make sure everything's on. All right, so that's that's just kind of my metronome. And notice it's sounding exactly in time with that blinking light there, right? Because that's our tempo. So oftentimes, if you just start with a basic beat like this, then turn your tempo knob, figure out what feels right to you at the moment, you know, faster or slower. I think I'm going to stick with that 80 BPM, though. Okay, so there's there's our basic beat. Now let's go to a different part, and you do have to kind of turn off step mode if you want to hear what the sounds are. I've got three of the same sound here. Let's go with this snare. So um, turn step mode back on, and I'm just again I'm not really thinking about it. I'm just going to kind of try some stuff. Just put some snares in. See if I like how it sounds. There we go. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Um, now let's switch to so a different sound. Sure, let's do that one. And turn step mode back on again. So again, I'm not really thinking about it. It's just kind of trial and error. I'm just pressing a few random things, see how it sounds. I don't like it, move it you know, forward or backwards. So to me, this is, this is kind of the easiest way. I, I actually find this easier than live record most of the time uh, for most things. But uh, what I was saying though is a good way of getting started is you just, you do this, uh, you know, you lay down. So we now have three different things that are happening in our song, right? If we just watch it play. So I've got my, Sound two, sound three, and sound four. Those are the only things firing. Everything else is off right now. Right? Now I'm back in live record mode. I just play on top of that. Okay, so you can kind of use this to like help yourself get inspired or help yourself get started with a song. And you can use both step sequencer mode and live record mode in conjunction, right? So now I'll record in live record mode. I kind of liked what I was doing there, so I'll do that. So record here, hit play. Oops, sorry, didn't record. Okay, so I don't really like what I just did. Um, but, so we already learned if I want to just erase and record again, right? That's function, this 15th one would erase that part. But I can also switch to step sequencer mode and there's all those, those uh, notes that I just played. And I could just change it here, right? So what I want to do is something more like this, I think. Okay, whatever, something like that. So yeah, so f to me they, it's really helpful to kind of switch back and forth between both. Some things you'll find it's easier to input via live record mode where you just tap at the right time. Other things, it's easier to input it like this. And uh, the other great thing about a step sequencer is it allows you to write music that you aren't physically capable of playing. Like 
uh, you know, since we can have 10 sounds per, uh, per bucket here, per step, you know, you would potentially have to have like 10 different hands in order to actually play that music on a bunch of different instruments, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't be possible. So a step sequencer allows us to do things that we can't do with traditional instruments, um, especially when you get into really complex music or, you know, things that are just way too fast, uh, things like that. So um, they're, they're really fun and flexible and um, that, yeah, just have fun with it. Okay, so I think that's, uh, that's basically it for step mode or step sequencer mode. Um, play around with that. And again, definitely use it in conjunction with the live record mode. You can do either or, but I find it's helpful to do both for different parts of the song. Often for the more rhythm parts of the song, like the drums, um, I'll do it in step sequencer mode. And then for the more kind of lead parts of the song, the more expressive parts, I'll do it as a live record mode. But there's no right or wrong way to do it. You can do whatever you like.